So this year my um, confidence has improved on spelling and writing because I don't have to worry about I I don't have to worry about forgetting my words. I have brainstorming apps. I have apps that help me with my spelling and they're built for people like me who like dyslexics like me who don't know how to who aren't as good at spelling and it predicts how to spell it. And I, I've improved a lot lately because I don't, I, my confidence has gone up because I actually enjoy writing now and my stories are better because they're spelled correct and they don't, they're not messy because they're on the iPad. So essentially it looks similar. There's desks, students and a teacher. However, when the teacher is running a science lesson, they can distribute the instructional texts instantly to the whole class. Students can video their experiment in slow motion in order to make accurate findings. If you want to share your work with the class, you can flick it up on the big screen. Or if a student finds a great resource, they'll offer it to you as an email or they'll airdrop it to you. Students can move around freely with their device they can photograph and document their surroundings for projects. And that's one of the great things about a mobile device. You don't have to be stuck in the classroom. Students have more choice in the way that they can demonstrate their knowledge and share their creativity. Each child has an interactive atlas, encyclopedia, camera, video editing suite, music creation software, email, word processor and much more, literally at their fingertips. Literacy is enhanced as students can put their work into a real context. They can publish an ebook or write a screenplay for a short film that they can actually make. In this digital age, we believe that students have the choice to be consumers of content or creators of content. And we've purposely chosen apps to promote creativity and content creation. Before I entered the iPad class, I was never really interested in writing. I was interested in reading, but I never really wrote as much as I do now. Um, when I started using Book Creator on the iPad, I started to write a lot more and I really liked how the final product came out and it always looked really professional and I could publish my work and I really liked the idea of that. Um, I also got into graphic design and it was really fun and I didn't think I would have as much fun as I would now. I've published around 15 books now and I've enjoyed writing every single one of them. Um, I'd like to write a lot more in the future and I would like to be a writer or a graphic designer as well. Well, I like designing because I, well, I really like looking at art and I use those ideas and put them into work so when I present something to the class I try to make it as creative as possible and I find it really fun. Well, When I was doing my geothermal assessment we didn't just have to do it in one way you could either make a movie and like act it out of the news report or you could you could write it up in pages and set it out as like an actual newspaper or you had the standard choice of just writing out paragraphs. Being in a class where each student has their own iPad has been really um, incredible to watch the, the learning journey that the kids have had this year because the kids have had to be really creative in their choices that they're making in terms of presenting their work. I've found a lot of kids have started to uncover hidden talents, things that they didn't know that they already had and they're also able to help other students and peer tutoring opportunities have been really valuable for them to reinforce the knowledge that they have. The context to this design based inquiry process was for the children to take control of their own learning and to drive their own learning and we wanted to connect outside of just our classroom. So what we asked the children to do was to come up with a problem that would help the uh, Humani children improve their learning in their classrooms 
And my role really changed throughout that process to more of a facilitator um, and guiding the children um, through their own interests and how they wanted the project to run. Kimani is a small school in Africa and they only have one laptop per about 60 kids and we need to help them with their learning and we need to change that. We love technology so we combined our ideas to create a learning Game Boy called the Game Boy Grade Plus. The Game Boy Grade Plus is a learning Game Boy so we thought of the teacher having the laptop and they transfer the files onto the Game Boy using a link cable so the kids and students can use the Game Boy to learn new things. The next stage was the planning and design stage. We chose to use 3D Creationist to build our model of the Game Boy Grade Plus. This is the D-pad, A and B buttons. This is the link cable port to transfer the lessons. This is the inbuilt fan to cool down the Game Boy. So the key skills behind this project um, were a range of 21st century thinking skills such as problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, uh, working in groups, emotional intelligence and decision making within a real world purpose. This is our 3D prototype which we 3D printed using the 3D printer. Now we have a model we can refine our ideas. So in my classroom now, what I've really noticed um, is the children have a lot more choice and ownership over their learning, and they're not restricted by um, any one particular medium or one particular way of doing things, which has really broadened their creativity which is something that we've tried to foster in the classroom. This year we've discovered many students taking on projects in their own time. And these students have discovered a passion and they're self-motivated and well on their way to being lifelong learners. One day I, in the a math lesson, I, um, Mr. Timms wanted to play a maths game and he didn't have enough dice for it, so I went home and made it a dice um, and, and hopscotch and I coded it and I went, I went to school and I taught the class how to do it because Mr. Tim's liked it so much and um, I, they really liked it and they, we used it for the game and we, we played it for about a week. Um, so you just add a text and press the tick. You move it to the middle of the screen and press add code. Um, then you do when is tapped and it already has the iPad. Um, over the holidays, I started looking at YouTube clips on my iPad of how to um, do some craft creations. These are some I made and what I like about using the iPad for learning is that I can rewind and go back and I have choices of what to do so that makes a difference to normal art classes. Uh, I got this idea of YouTube and all the other things I created are made from YouTube or Google. Uh, this is a little bunny and it's grass thing. Um, this is a giraffe. The latest thing I've been doing is stop motion um, and it is where you take lots and lots of pictures of things to make them moving in a video. I've discovered this year that I tell and I have and it's coding. So coding is basically like you make your own game, so the stuff behind the game which makes it happen. So I, I've discovered that my imagination has gone up because I, everything that I thought I couldn't do, like I had these ideas for games I could invent, but I thought I just, I just went and I knew inside me that I couldn't do it. But once I went to the iPad class and we got the app, the Hopscotch, I could do what I wanted to do with 
the app and I can make anything I want with it. So back in 2014, our school went through a process of designing a unique school vision and then a series of principles that we thought would guide where we went as a school into the future. It was very much about what are the skills, knowledge and attitude that our students are going to need well into the future, so projecting out into the workforce and beyond. So our experience in 2016 has shown that um, the iPad, the BYO iPad program uh, provides for an interactive, engaging and connected classroom. And that, certainly the feedback we're getting from parents and students and our teachers, is providing for a far wider range of opportunities for kids to show their creativity and their learning. So we know from our research that if we project into the future and think carefully about what our young people are going to need when they enter the workforce, it's skills like critical thinking, problem solving, innovation, creativity, collaboration, and all these things can, can occur locally with the person beside you, but equally in the current work environment they can occur with someone on the other side of the world. Our job, our responsibility is to prepare our young people for that world and it starts in primary.